Hello, I'm Anesta Jones of EPA's Office of Public Affairs. Welcome to Green Scene, an environmental podcast you can take with you. Two of the most common sources of lead poisoning are from exposure to deteriorating lead-based paint and to lead dust generated from renovation and repair activities in older homes and buildings. In today's economy, many people are deciding to do their own projects to save money, including renovating their home. EPA wants to make sure that if you choose to go that route, you're not putting your family at risk of lead poisoning. To tell us more about how you can do it yourself and protect your family is Wendy Cleland Hamnett, the Acting Office Director for EPA's Office of Pollution Prevention and Toxics. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Anesta. So, Wendy, why is it important for people, especially parents, to be concerned about exposure to lead and paint? Lead is very toxic, and infants and young children are more likely to be exposed to lead and lead and dust because young children crawl around on the floor, they put their hands in their mouths, they put their toys and other objects in their mouths that are likely to have dust on them. Mm -hmm. uh, children are also very susceptible to the toxic effects of lead because their bodies are growing and developing, they absorb more of the lead, and even low doses of lead can cause effects like behavioral problems and learning problems, and high levels of lead in children can result in very serious problems like seizures or even death. So it's very important that we protect children from exposure to lead and dust. The good news is that we have made great strides in doing that. Mm -hmm. Back in 1978, 30 years ago, the CDC estimated that there were about 3 million children in the U.S. who had high blood lead levels. And in 2002, the CDC reported that that number had been reduced by 90% to about 300,000 children. Mm -hmm. And recently, they think that number has gone even lower. But we still have a lot of work to do. Last year, the agency issued a final rule aimed to prevent lead poisoning. Can you tell us more about this rule and how it strengthened public health protection? I'd be happy to do that. The rule requires that contractors and other construction professionals who were doing work in homes that were built before 1978 or in buildings where young children are likely to spend a lot of time, like daycare centers and preschools and kindergartens, mm -hmm. that the contractors doing work there where they might disturb lead-based paint use a set of actually very simple but effective lead-safe work practices that reduce the amount of lead dust that's generated and also keep children from being exposed to it. And that rule goes into effect in April 2010. You mentioned the rule is for contractors and it takes effect next year. What about do-it-yourselfers? How can they protect themselves and their families? It's a very important question. Before I go into that, I'd just like to mention that families who are considering hi hiring contractors to do work in their home talk to the prospective contractors about using lead safe work practices and make sure that their contractors will do that. But for parents or other people who decide they want to do work in their homes themselves, mm -hmm. uh, there are actually three simple steps they can take to protect themselves and their families. The first is to contain the work area. Mm -hmm. So any lead dust that's generated doesn't get into other parts of the home. Mm -hmm. And you can do that by putting plastic up to contain the area. Mm -hmm. We'd encourage people, if they can remove furniture and drapes and things from the work area, mm -hmm. to do that before they start the work so they don't have to worry about lead dust getting in there. And any furniture they can't remove, floors and so forth, they cover with heavy-duty plastic and tape it up so when the job's done, they can fold up that plastic and remove it from their house. They should also make sure to keep children and pets and pregnant women mm -hmm. out of the area while the work's being done. We have some caution tape here, but right. you know, to make sure that family members and visitors know not to go into the work area. The second step they can do is while they're doing work, try to minimize the amount of dust that's generated. Mm -hmm. So if they're using a sander or a grinder, try to use one that has a HEPA attachment that'll suck up the dust while it's being generated. The third step is to clean the area thoroughly before they take down the plastic and let family members into the area. Um, wet mop, use a disposable mop because you don't want to reuse a mop that might have lead dust on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
use lots of rinses to wipe down the area. Use, a, again, a HEPA-equipped vacuum with a HEPA filter on it to clean carpets and other surfaces. So you get up as much of the dust as possible. Wendy, you mentioned some of the cleaning materials that mm -hmm. do-it-yourselfers should have on hand um, before they start a renovation project. Are there any others? Well, certainly the people who are doing the work should wear a disposable respirator that you can buy at your hardware store or similar sorts of stores. Um, cleaning uh, fluid, the misting bottle, this is one way to sort of keep the dust down while you're do doing the job to kind of keep areas wet so you don't have dust getting into the air. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned heavy duty plastic and tape. Mm -hmm. When you're closing off the area, it's important to tape over the um, heating and air conditioning vents so you're not spreading dust through the rest of the home that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to have um, either little disposable booties that you can put over your shoes or a way to clean your shoes off. So if, if you're going, doing work and going in and out of the area, you're not tracking dust into other parts of the house. What other specific things should a do-it-yourselfer do to prepare a work area before they start a renovation? Uh, I think it's important to minimize the going in and out of the work area, mm -hmm. to bring all of your tools and equipment into the work area before you start the work. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, protective equipment for the person doing the work. I mentioned the respirator. Mm -hmm. um, there are just sort of a disposable seat you can put on if you want to keep the lead dust off of your, clo off of your clothes, a hat. Uh, just try to think ahead of all the things that you might need and have them in the room with you when you start the work. I hear that wet wiping is important too. Just how important is it and keeping the area clean? Very, very important. Wet wiping is probably the best way to keep the dust down and to make sure that the dust is gone mm -hmm. before you let family members back into the area. So, you know, having your bucket and water, your mop, your spray bottle and all of that, and using it frequently as you're doing the work will help keep the dust down. It's important for the person doing the work, too, so they're not exposed to it. Right. That's why the gloves are important. Gloves, hat, mm -hmm. something to cover up your clothing. EPA and the Centers for Disease Control are clearly doing a lot to prevent lead poisonings. If a parent, however, feels that their child may have been exposed, is there something that they should do to get them checked? Yes. Uh, if they believe they or their children have been exposed, they should contact their family doctor. The doctor can do a very simple blood test to determine if they, they or their child have an elevated level of uh, lead in their blood. Thank you for being here today, Wendy. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. This is all important information that will help do-it-yourselfers protect themselves and their families from lead poisoning. And for more information on EPA's lead poisoning prevention program or to obtain copies of brochures, go to www.epa.gov lead or call 1-800-424-LEAD. See you next time on Green Scene.